hand, please? may be seated. We've just celebrated the birth of Christ, the incarnation, as God became one of us, letting us know how much we are loved and how God will go to any lengths to save us. In dying on the cross, Christ destroyed our death and separation from God. And in rising from the dead, Christ has restored our life. Christ promised that he would come again in glory. As in repentance, conversion, and baptism, Helen Robbins put on Christ. So now in Christ, Helen is clothed with glory. Here now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet fully been revealed. But we do know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him even as he is. Those who have this hope commit themselves to walk in holiness even as Christ our Lord himself is holy. Listen to these unforgettable words shared by Jesus himself. He said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. I hold the keys of hell and of death. Because I live, those who know me and love me shall live also. Friends, beloved family, we have gathered here this afternoon to praise God, to witness to our faith in Christ, and to celebrate the life, contribution, and graduation of Helen Robbins. We come together this afternoon in grief, acknowledging our human frailty and our human loss. However, we celebrate Helen's journey, a life well lived, a strong faith in God, that was real, precious, and lasting. This afternoon we gather with joy, with hope, and with sure confidence, all because of the atonement of Christ, Christ who conquered sin, death, and the grave by his sacrificial death. Helen has graduated into the nearer presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, and we pray that God will speak to us today that in our own pain, and questioning and struggle, we would find comfort, comfort from his wonderful grace. Right in the midst of sorrow, we find hope, and in dealing with death, we remember the wonderful promise of eternal life made possible through Christ. If you would bow your heads and pray with me. Eternal and ever-loving God, we are grateful today that you are with us at a time like this, 
a time when we experience pain and loss, when we have questions and struggles, sometimes when we're not quite sure which way to turn, you are a God close at hand. You have promised never to leave us and never to forsake us. And we are so grateful for that this afternoon. Thank you for Helen, the life she lived, the deep faith that she had in you, the incredible contribution that she made. And all of us together celebrate her graduation into eternity, into your nearer presence. We pray that today as we participate in this worship service, that each of us would sense your presence, that we would hear the voice of your spirit speaking to us, that you would help each of us to develop a deep faith, a strong confidence in you and your ability, not only to help us through this life, but to usher us into life everlasting as we join you on the other side. We pray it today in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to listen to He Touched Me. Helen Robbins, 84 years of age, of Guyman, passed away Friday, December 23rd, 2022, at Wesley Medical Center in Wichita, Kansas. The daughter of George Lee and Florence Lucille Weimers Gray, Helen Marie Gray was born March 8th, 1938, in Bandera, Texas. 
She was raised in Bandera and graduated from Mandira High School as valedictorian of the class of 1956. Helen and Wesley Arlen Robbins were united in marriage on July 15, 1961 at the Methodist Church in Divine, Texas. In addition to being a devoted homemaker, Helen worked alongside her husband in the family ag consulting business, Sharpshooters. She was devoted many years to doing the administrative work to support senior citizens. Helen was an active 53-year member of the Order of the Eastern Star, serving in many positions throughout her life, including past Grand Ruth. The Robinses had moved to Guyman from Burlington, Colorado in 1997. She was a member right here at Victory Memorial Methodist Church and a past member of our United Methodist Women. She was preceded in death by her husband, Wesley Robbins, on February 27th, 2017. She was also preceded in death by her parents and an infant sister, Ethel and Gray. Survivors include one daughter, Dr. Sharon Robbins of Guyman, three sons, Guy Robbins and wife, Stacy of Hugerton, Kansas, Mark Robbins and wife, Terry of Cedar Park, Texas, and Bill Robbins and wife, Sarah of Abbeville, Kansas. Nine grandchildren, Jana Lee, Brianne, Mackenzie, Taylor, Tyler, Cameron, Kaylee, Tab Wes, and Weston. Two great grandchildren, Eli Wesley and Kai Matthew. One sister, Carolyn Sue Graff of Hondo, Texas, along with numerous nieces, nephews, extended family, and a host of beloved friends. I'm going to ask Taylor if he'll come forward at this time. He's going to be singing for us. You are my sunshine. Thank you, Taylor. That is a favorite in many families, mine too. I have a beloved adopted mother who's 94 years old and I sing it for her quite often. Our lesson from the Old Testament comes out of the Psalms, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. 
He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And then our New Testament lesson comes out of the letter Paul wrote to the Christians in Rome, Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 28. Paul has shared many, many realities up until this point. And now right here in the middle of this letter, he has the following to say. We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, those who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called, and those he called, he also justified, those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to all of these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is now at the right hand of God, also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword, as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are going to listen to Because He Lives.
The family are going to come and share reflections on Helen's life. Whoever is first, I guess you're up. My name is Kaylee. I am Helen's youngest granddaughter, and I am the daughter of her youngest son, Bill. My grandmother was one outstanding woman. I remember my whole life she would always tell me that my voice matters, no matter what anyone else told me. And she never gave up on me, even when I probably was the bane of their existence for a little while. Oh, the preteen years. <laughs> One year, I think it, thank you. <laughs> One year, I think it was probably fifth or sixth grade. It was my birthday, October 29th, and I always had a Halloween-themed birthday party. <laughs> We invited my whole class, but only two girls ended up coming. But my grandma didn't care. She made sure that I had so much fun. She made so many fun snacks, and the one I remember most was a bunch of marshmallows wrapped in a fruit by the foot that looked like a little mummy. And that was the cutest thing. She made so many snacks for us. And I only have happy moment memories from that day, and that was her goal, and she succeeded. My grandma was one of the most stubborn, sassiest, and funniest people I got the pleasure of knowing for my short 24 years. Her life was so long and filled with so many adventures, so much love, loss, laughter, and tears. She lived a life only half of us hoped to live. She inspired me my whole life, and she always encouraged me no matter how often my hobbies change. You know, in the last month or so, I've had a handful of people express to me how lucky I am to have been so close to my grandparents. And I am. I am so incredibly blessed. They helped raise my brothers and me up until their last days, pretty much. My, never, my grandma never gave up on people, and if she did, they probably deserved it. She was selfless, so loving, and so stinking cute. Her smile was my favorite, or when she would get flustered. It always made me quietly giggle to myself. I'm going to miss driving home and not telling her, then showing up at her house, walking in, walking in, and her face would light up, and she'd be like, what are you doing here? And I'd just walk over to her, and I'd give her a hug, and I'm like, I'm here to see you, Grandma. And she'd just stand, sit there holding my hand, smiling, her face lighting up the entire room. When I think back to my childhood, I don't remember much, but all the memories I do have include my grandma and my granddad. I'm so thankful they were so willing to sta step up and help raise me and my brothers when my dad was raising us on his own. Okay, I promise I'm almost done. I just love talking about this sweet woman so much. Uh, but all the memories... Oh, I'm sorry. And I'm so sad I'll never see her crystal blue eyes or her bright smile in person again. My grandma was one of my favorite people. My life, my family's lives, and anyone who knew her's lives will never be the same. 
but she's back with the love of her life. <laughs> and boy, I would have loved to see that reunion. <laughs> I love you to the moon of that, Grandma. A million times over. It's not goodbye. It's just see you later. Hi, I'm Tyler. <laughs> uh, I'm Helen's grandchild and Bill's eldest child. Grandma was somebody that you could count on. I, I can't even begin to list everything that wonderful woman did for me. In my most destitute moments, she gave me a place to live. She always had a plate of food for me. She did nothing but support me, support me and I heard nothing but praise. She was a source of constant st strength for me. I wouldn't be coming up on two years clean if it wasn't for Grandma's love and support. She was always there to talk about anything I might be dealing with, and believe me, she loved to talk. I learned a lot about Grandma over the, over the last couple years. Like, did you know that she worked with some of the first computers? Like, the ones that ran on punch cards. Grandma worked with those. Uh, as someone who is currently going to school for computers, to college for computers, that, that alone blew my mind. Um, uh, Grandma was so smart, and the older I got, the more I saw that. This last year, I called and talked to her more than a few times about this accounting class I was taking and doing awful in. I still don't really understand accounting very well, but she helped me understand it a lot more than I would have if we hadn't talked. Out of everything, I think I'm gonna miss those long conversations that we had the most. Grandma, Grandma taught me how to cook, instilling in me a lifelong love of cooking. To this day, whenever I cook a particularly good meal, I think of her. Some of my earliest memories of Grandma are of when, me, when my brother, sister, and I were very young. Grandma and Granddad used to take us camping all the time. I, I remember one year, it was around Christmas, so. Grandma helped us build gingerbread houses. Those are just some of my, my, some of the memories of Grandma that will stay with me forever. I'm gonna miss Grandma more than I can express with words. I'm just glad she finally gets to see Granddad again, and I hope to see them both again someday. Thanks. Hi, I'm Cameron, second to Bill and middle child. Um, I'll keep mine short. I tend to go on for a bit if I don't. Um, I'm sure we can all agree that's far from an uncommon trait in our family. <laughs> I tend to wax on. Um, Grandma and Granddad were such an integral part to my life and identity and, and who I am as a person. Um, I, I don't know if I can find words to do justice to just what they meant and what she meant to the rest of us. How do you explain a life of love and lessons and memories? And uh, I always find myself able to take a step back, uh, try to appreciate what I have, um, be objective about my life, and see how far I've come. They uh, taught me how to do that. She was always the one I would argue is a harsh term, debate partner I liked. Uh, taught me to listen to people. Um, understand their viewpoints and how to argue without fighting, I guess. Um, uh, I hope she'll be watching the rest of us as the, our lives unfold. Maybe not too soon, though. Uh, reunion with your other half is quite a big event. I imagine it'll take a bit of time. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mark. I'm Helen's second son, one of four. Many words have been, you have been, and will be used to describe my mother today. Smart, talented, caring, supportive. She was all those things. A lifelong learner that consumed information in pursuit of wisdom, wisdom that she would share with you given the chance. Gifted and with a beautiful singing voice, she shared her talent in the church for most of her life. However, when I th remember my mother and reflect on her long life, it's, it is clear that, it, it was, that her life's motivation was to care for and support her family. And when I say family, I mean those were born in and those that were brought in. She viewed them all as, and viewed them and treated them all as her. As I remember her, other words come to mind. 
worrier. <laughs> My mother was a world-class worrier, one of her chief talents. She worried for her family, for her community, and for her country. In the virtue of every call I had with my mother, she would begin with, are you okay? Is anything wrong? Is everyone well? Right, every time. Well, we often kidded her about being a worrier. That trait, as much as any, any other, spoke to her motivation in life. The well-being of her family, she, you know, she spent her life concerned with the welfare of those she cared about. My mother had a great memory for some things. She would recall every good thing that you did. Most of those positive events grew better with time in her recalling of them. <laughs> Not only the things you accomplished, but what you could have accomplished if you wanted. For those who heard I could have played quarterback for the Cowboys, it's not true, but she thought it was. Ironically, she was also forgetful. And in ways more interesting than not being able to remember where she put the title to the car, which she couldn't. She had the ability to completely forget and forgive those things that you did that weren't so positive. She, would also, she was also, as everyone has testified, a very accomplished communicator. When someone would ask about her family or any member thereof, she would regale that fortunate person with long minutes or hours of all the wonderful things her family had or were accomplishing their many talents and qualities. As I look back, I, I realize the sheer power and the blessing of have some, having someone who believed so strongly in your ability to achieve and reach your potential. Oh, the while forgetting and forgiving her shortcomings. She was proud, so proud of you regardless. Regardless of your chosen path or even how long it took you to find your path. <laughs> and a number of you know who I'm talking about, but anyway, we'll keep going. <laughs> the last month has been full of ups and downs, and as she fought this terrible illness, in one of those down times we were together, she talked to each of her children, born or brought in, she considers them all her children, and said, take care of each other. And that was the thought foremost in her mind, for that was her life's mission. Her, her life's accomplishment to take care of her family to support them no matter what. To me, that's her legacy. So, in memory of her, and on her behalf, I ask you, worry. <laughs> <laughs> worry about your family, your neighbors, your community, and do what you can for them. Remember, remember and celebrate, and freely embellish those the accomplishments, the successes, the good. Forget. Learn from, then forget and forgive the not so good. And finally, take care of each other. We'll miss you, Mom. God bless and keep you. Thank you to each of the family for sharing those sacred memories, traits, the way our lives touch and form bonds that don't ever leave us. Beloved family, friends, we have gathered here in worship today to celebrate salvation made possible through Christ. A salvation that goes on and on and on. If this life is all we have to look forward to, I think we should be pretty miserable. 
because it's good and bad and sometimes very ugly. But Jesus said, there's more to life than this life. I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, there you may be also. This is just the introduction. This is just the start. Some have called it the testing grounds. Yes, we are here to celebrate salvation and especially today to remember the life of someone who lived fully, joyfully, faith fully. Helen was a godly woman, and I don't use that word lightly. Someone who finds God, finds a love for God, finds how to serve God. None of us are godly on our own. God's got to draw us and awaken us and help us come alive. And if we'll do that, then we can be called godly people, people who have God in their lives, who shine the Christ light. Not only was she godly, but she was industrious, larger than life, full of life, working, giving, serving, using every day fully right until the end. Not a shirker, but somebody who made a wonderful contribution. And she was, as you've heard, loving. Loving in a way that looks for the best in others, that gives the best to others, that is kind enough to forget some of the things we've done that we are ashamed of, that we'd rather not have brought up. She was down to earth. What you saw is what you got. Kind, fun-loving, and competitive. But beyond all of that, caring. She cared for people, whoever God put in front of her, and as you heard Mark say, especially her beloved family. She was highly motivated and always gave of her best to every endeavor. Grew up somewhat disadvantaged but wouldn't let that stop her. She went on to make the most of what she had. One of those, the glass is half full individuals. Difficult circumstances prevented her from attending college, which she would have loved to have been a part of. However, that did not stop her education or her learning. There's so much to learn. My mom would tell me, if you're a reader, you can have a university education. There's a wealth of knowledge out there if you'll apply yourself. If you're fortunate enough to go to university or to college, great. But if you can't, don't give up. You can continue to learn and grow. And Helen was such an individual. She was loyal and caring to friend and family alike, to neighbor and stranger alike. She was a loving daughter, a precious sister, a devoted and faithful wife who gave everything she had to make a marriage happy and last. Involved and nurturing as a mother, and of course a fantastic grandmother and great-grandmother. Not one who was absent, but deeply involved. Some have said grandmothers especially are like having second mothers. The best of them pour their lives into their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren. And some have to raise their grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And they do. And they do an excellent job. She was ever thoughtful and caring. A woman who found it easy to smile. If you looked at the pictures, there were so many smiles. They were easy for her to share with others easy to smile and who delighted in serving and giving and being with those she loved. Her beloved Eastern Star sisters or her church family or her blood relatives or her in-laws or outlaws, whoever it was, she liked to be with the people God put in her life. Her relationships with others were treasured and they were all important to her. That should not be surprising. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. How? By the way you love one another. And that love was 
visible in Helen's life. In the short time I've got to reflect on her life, I noticed three great loves. She loved God, and she loved her family, and she sure loved music. Helen was a people person. She found it easy to love and be loved. Her relationship with her husband, Wesley, is a fine example. She supported him in all his moves, all his career adventures, and there were many. Just ask the kids. She adapted quickly, and she would immediately look for ways to help and serve and be a part of what was happening around her. She had that knack of believing the best in others. Easy to say, not easy to do. We live in a very critical society. You have a big piece of paper that's white with a small black dot on it, and you ask people what they see, and they see the black dot. But Helen had an ability to see the big white piece of paper and overlook the little black dot. She believed the best in others, refused to hold grudges, treated everybody with love and respect and fairness. Hers was a kind and a sweet and a roomy soul with plenty of room for others. Always quick to help, always quick to serve. She discovered how to enjoy life, how to be enriched by caring for others, how to treasure the relationships God blessed her with. And when things were tough, and they often were, how to cast her cares upon the Lord because the Lord cares for us. Somebody has said, God will never give you more than you can handle. I think he does quite often because it's not just for you to handle. You're supposed to handle those things with God's help. There's much in life that is too hard to handle. But if you are in Christ, then no matter what comes your way, he's more than enough to carry the load. He does the heavy lifting. You and I have just got to do our part. Helen discovered how to do that. I'm proud to tell you that Helen was a committed Christian. She knew and loved Jesus. He was her Savior, and she served him as her Lord. And she shared Jesus with those she loved, especially through music. She was a faithful and active worshiper here at Victory Memorial, enjoyed singing in the choir and participating in the various missions and ministries, especially among our women. She loved music and occasionally would sing a solo for worship. She made sure that Sharon took piano lessons and insisted that Mark be a part of the children's choir, even though he had reservations about the abilities that he brought to the choir. Helen loved and cherished her children. She supported them. She invested in them. She encouraged them. She wanted them to excel, and they did. She supported them 100% throughout childhood and into their teens and right into their adult life. Always available and willing to talk, to listen, to counsel, to visit, to go fishing, to be a part of whatever they were interested in. Helen was very committed and involved in Eastern Star and all the activities and all the offices that Eastern Star is made up of, served in so many ways and made so many wonderful memories. And her beloved sisters have shared some of those around the table today. One funny story, Guy was mentioning a fishing trip where uh, she loved to fish and she especially loved to catch fish. And if she wasn't catching, she was not happy. And if others were catching and she wasn't catching, she was especially unhappy, especially when they were casting right next to each other and her line would have no action, but the line next to hers would be loaded with fish again and again. By the end of that fishing trip, she was madder than a wet hen <laughs> because she loved to catch and she had that competitive streak in her. Good-natured fun-loving, motivated, full of life. What a gift 
Helen was and is. She lived a long, meaningful life, a faithful life. I think we can say a happy life. In spite of setbacks and sadness and loss, there was a happiness about her that came to the surface easily. She loved well, she worked hard, she gave generously. She'll be fondly remembered and, as you heard, deeply missed by all those who knew her and loved her and were loved by her. I pray today that we will hold high her memory by emulating her character, by building a faith deep and strong like she had, by growing character, Christian values that she embodied. I want to remind us that funerals are much more for us who are still alive physically on the planet than for those who have graduated. They've run their race. They've kept the faith. They've earned the crown. Now is our time to think about how are we doing? And so I want to mention the two scriptures we read. The Lord is my shepherd. It's more than a sentimental thought. It's more than a comforting or poetic thought. It's a practical lifestyle to have God as your shepherd. Shepherds lived with their sheep, watched over them, risked their lives if there was any danger, made sure they were well fed and protected. That's who God is. Close, real, a part of your day-to-day -day life if you will let him be. He wants to be your shepherd, but he does not force that relationship. He offers it, and you and I must accept it. And then we can echo what David says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, this life and the next, and I will dwell in God's house. I'll be a part of God's family forever. The grandkids said, it's just farewell or so long until we see you again. Helen's not gone. She's gone home. And we're going to go there too if we get things right. If we know Christ as Savior and serve him as Lord. He wants us there. Helen wants us there. All those we've loved and have gone ahead of us are hoping we're going to make it safe and secure to that peaceful shore. Make sure God is your shepherd. May I make sure he's mine. And then Paul says something so powerful. If God did not spare his own son, but freely gave him up to purchase salvation for each of us, will he not together with the son freely give us all things? This is what Jesus said. I have come that you might have life and life abundantly. That's what Paul's writing about. Nothing can separate you from God's love if you'll put your life in his hands and walk with him. He will watch over you. He'll make sure you graduate with honors. He'll make sure you land safely on the other side. May that love compel you and me into a deep abiding relationship with the God who loves us best of all. Let us pray together. Lord, thank you for Helen, a good example not perfect, none of us are. We're all flawed, we all fail. We all fall short of your glory, sinners in desperate need of grace. Thank you that you pour your grace out upon us without measure. Thank you that you're quick to forgive an offense, that you're willing to wash away our sins because of the shed blood of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you persistently call us to come and belong to your family, to be a part of forever with you. Help us each one to know Christ as our good shepherd. Help each one of us to experience the love of God that sets us free and delivers us from sin and selfishness and all the hang-ups and habits that we develop along the way. Make us new creations, born again, filled with your spirit, joyful, to know you and share you with others. Make us bright, shining Christ lights, even as Helen was. We prayed in Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Before we do the benediction, I'd like us to listen to 
I'll Walk With God, one of the songs that Helen loved and sang. Receive God's blessing and God's challenge as we leave worship and go into the various mission fields that God has asked each of us to live within and witness within. May the love that brought Christ down to earth, the love that allowed him to wear our flesh, the love that compelled him to feed and teach and heal and help wherever he went, a love so strong that he took a journey all the way up to Golgotha that he allowed himself to be nailed to a tree and he hung there and bled and died all because of a love for you and me. May that love be in you and may that love be in me. May it keep us close to God and close to one another so that when he comes or calls us, we're ready to go. Amen. <laughs>